Dirty Dozen, part six. And this is, oh, not very exciting. It looks just like a normal Nano. I mean, surely I wouldn't have ordered that. Although, taking a second look, come on out you. Taking a second look, I guess I'll get that out later. Um, that looks like a USB-C on the, on the top there. Uh, and so I guess the thing to find out is, is it a Nano? Uh, in other words, does it behave like a Nano? And does the USB-C make any difference in programming or in uh, accessing it? Boy, this guy really doesn't want to be... This guy really doesn't want to come out. This is... Come on. There we go, finally. All right, good. Oh, that was a... That was a thing. Uh, yeah, so what can we do with it? I mean, we could blink a light, but that's pretty boring. I guess I could solder this up. Uh, let's see what we've got. Ah, here we go. From Dirty Dozen Part 5, we've got this um, LIS3DH. And uh, mm, it's interesting. Like it's, So it's the accelerometer thing. And so you go back and have a look at that video. I will uh, link that up in the corner. But since then, I've been doing a bit of reading of the data sheet for the chip, and I've actually gone and uh, designed my own PCB around that chip because it doesn't need an awful lot of uh, components around it, and it does some pretty amazing things, including, I didn't realize when I did the Dirty Dozen Part 5, but including it does temperature. And it also, it's got these A1, A2, and A3 here, which is analog to digital. So in fact, that they're inputs. I, I don't know why, but I think in, when I did the original video of uh, Dirty Dozen 5 with this module, I think I said the exact opposite of what they actually were. I think I said that the analog ones were inputs and that the int uh, one and two were outputs. It's the exact opposite. So these, these analogs are inputs. You can also configure, I think it's ADC3 as temperature. And you could do analog to digital conversion on the other. So if you had some sort of analog measuring device, you could put it through here. Forget about the accelerometer. Just put it through here to get a digital output. That is pretty cool. I guess we'll do the temperature one. So we'll solder this one up and then we'll swap it out for here. And we'll have a look at accessing the temperature component or... Uh, measuring of here I, from memory it's got a weird sort of thing where it doesn't actually measure the actual temperature it measures relative temperature but we'll have a look at the code for that when we get it all set up and, uh, and we'll see what it's like let's do it Uh, but I do have some uh, channel news. So while I just uh, gently solder this up, I'll, uh, I'll let one of my dogs explain what is happening. Over to you. One circuit is moving. Well, not the channel, but me. Uh, moving house. And uh, that's great. But it's going to be a little bit of a gap between videos for the next probably two to three months. Uh, that's how long it'll probably take me to pack up everything in the dungeon below and transfer it to another dungeon. Uh, there will be some release of videos in that time, as much as I can anyway, but uh, thank you for your patience and anticipation, and we'll see you on the other side of the move. Bye. Hopefully that's enough time. I'm still using this dreadful... Um, lead-free solder, and uh, yeah, not loving it, not loving it at all. I'm hoping that this runs out soon. I mean, apart from the temperature properties of it, which are not suiting me, I guess because of what I've got used to, that's what it is, it's just what I've got used to. But it's just, I don't know, it just doesn't handle very well. There's something about it which, it's just, I'm always getting into trouble with it. Like then I just made a bridge. Here's another one. <laughs>
Um, yeah, and it sort of gathers on the on the tip of the soldering iron rather than flowing into the hole. It's just not fun. And I guess if I was an expert solderer, I'd be able to solve that. But I'm just wanting to go back to the lead stuff, um, which might raise a few eyebrows in certain countries, I suppose. I imagine there's countries now where you, you can't even get the lead stuff. I don't know, but you can still get it here. And I've got, I mean, I don't solder enough and I've got enough of a stockpile that I think it's going to be fine. But see this, I'm just going over these holes now, which I didn't used to have to do just to get to flow down in there and make sure. And the other thing is that I've been doing is spending some time um, Uh, checking the connections, like when, once checking the little soldering joints. Because it takes a little bit longer and it's a little bit more unwieldy, you know, I've been making mistakes like uh, skipping some of the holes and, yeah, it's just lead-free solder. Let me know what you think in the comments. I mean, I've already had some comments from from some of you. I don't know that there's many people out there who favour it. If you do, please tell me, is it just an environmental thing or you like the lead-free solder because it's really good and I'm doing something wrong. Love to hear from you. All right, that's it. Let's get this thing connected up and see if we can get it programmed. Here's the code. And we can see here that the uh, Nano has been recognized. So there, there it is on USB 0. I did have a problem with a charge only cable, but I've changed that to a charge and data cable and uh, and now it's recognizing it and going well. So this is a variation of this code here, which is provided through the SparkFun board. It's not my board, but it, it, it works fine. Uh, if you want to go back to uh, Dirty Dozen 5, you'll see that and that's fine. I've set a my room temperature, a current temperature and a difference between the two because when the Nano comes up to speed and polls the uh, temperature unit, it doesn't give an absolute um, temperature, it gives a relative temperature. So it just gives a number basically straight out of the ADC and you've got to say, oh, that's the current temperature. You can code the room temperature in there, I guess, but then of course that's always changing. So what I've decided to do is to just make some code which compares the original temperature with what is uh, currently reading and then gets a difference and then just turns on LEDs. Uh, to indicate whether it's you know um, greater or less than certain numbers. So yeah, the normal setup in there, the LEDs as outputs. This is the my uh, mm my IMU uh, uh, setting up. So that seems fine. The temperature enabled is one, and that's coming from ADC three. Then what I did was uh, I actually found that I needed to take five or so readings to start with, just to let that sort of be stable. And so the original room temperature. Is uh, five readings, 100 milliseconds apart, and uh, and that seems to settle down. Then when we go into the loop, I measure the current temperature, so it's exactly the same measurement. But if it has changed, then the difference between this and the room temperature uh, will give the uh, will give the difference. Notice that you'd expect to be current temperature subtract my room temperature. It's the other way around. So I found with this unit that uh, when you increase the temperature that ADC output goes down to vice versa. I'm not sure why or whether I'm doing it correctly, but anyway, that's, that uh, is working fine now. Uh, then I just serial print the room temperature, the difference temperature and the current temperature. Uh, so I was just doing that to, uh, to get an idea of what's going on, but we might just stop that uh, and we'll just go to the, um, to the diff temp because the diff temp is the one we're interested in. Is it going up or, uh, or down? Then just a couple of if statements here. So um, again, pretty clumsy, but it works. Um, probably wouldn't normally do it this way. But anyway, if the, if the difference in temperature is less than zero, in other words, the chip has cooled, then it goes uh, blue. If the there's a bit of um, uh, hysteresis here between zero and two, if it's between two and 20 uh, degrees, then it goes green. And again, a little bit of hysteresis. If it's greater than 22, it goes yellow. There's a delay of 100 uh, seconds and it's off and running again. So let's just load that one up. And uh, 
it is not loading up. Oh, it's having trouble now. Why is that? Let's go and have a quick look at that again. Seems okay. Um, let's just try again. I might just reset it. The selected serial port is not connected. That's interesting. And there it goes. I just rebooted it and it's fine. Hmm. Um, okay, I do have it on a cable extender, so maybe it's something to do with being on a cable on a cable. Um, but anyway, it's all loaded up now, and we'll just have a look at uh, what we're seeing in terms of the plot. So I'll just put this over here, and there you can see every um, tenth of a second, 100 milliseconds. Uh, it's showing around about the one or two degrees. If I put my finger on the unit, on the module, uh, you can see that that shoots up and it's still climbing over the 30 degree mark and then I'll just let that cool down again, take my finger off and it'll cool back down to room temperature. Let's take it downstairs and see how it goes uh, so you can see the LEDs as well. Well, that's a, look at that lovely curve. That's a lovely exponential decay curve. That's nice. Here's our little rig hooked up to a power bank via a very short USB cable. How do I know it's uh, USB-C? Firstly, I had a look at the actual end of the Nano itself. It's USB-C. Nice. And then, of course, this is a USB-C cable, and it plugs in, and it's all good. There's my blue, my green, and my yellow LED coming out of uh, pins 4, 3, and 2, respectively. There's the temperature module, the old LIS 3DH that we've seen before. So let's give it some juice and hopefully it should go more or less into either a green or a blue. It looks like green. Let's We can get it into blue, I think, if we just spray a bit of cold air on it. There we go. So that's into blue. Oh, a bit more cold air maybe. That was a bit quick. Yep, so that's a temperature difference, which is less than zero, so it's it's cold. And then if we touch that, it should warm up. There's the green, back into blue again, there's the green. And then if we uh, keep the old bare mitt on it, there it goes to yellow. And then as it cools down, it should go back to green. And, oh, it's gone off. That's interesting because of not drawing much current, I guess, so the, um, the power uh, shut down. Yeah, so I'd say that, um, that that's fine. All the code will be on the blog. I'll be missing for maybe up to eight to ten weeks, and I will try and get videos in as I can. Uh, you could always go back and watch the uh, you know the two hundred that are on there, um, but I will uh, I'll try and get uh, as many as I can. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to call that that's the circuit working, and we'll see you as soon as I can. Bye.